Welcome back. It's a major development when it comes to an important cancer screening. Dr. Rachel Haley of HTA Midwest Health is here to tell us all about the new guidelines when it comes to screening for colon cancer. This is actually the second leading cause of cancer related deaths. So Dr. Haley, can you tell us more about the screening guidelines? Absolutely. So last year, the American Cancer Society lowered the beginning screening age from 50 to 45 because mm -hmm. they analyzed data and they found that there's an increasing number of colon cancers found in the younger age group. So they also looked at um, what tests are available, prioritized them, but they also emphasized personal preference in the testing options. That being said, not all insurance companies are covering the, the screening guidelines at this earlier age. Okay, but we are hearing that more people are finding colon cancer at a younger age, and that's kind of alarming. You know, so what are some of the new screening options that we can take advantage of? Well, it, it, the uh, most important thing to do is to get screened. So uh, your doctor can determine based on your risk factors, your age, your personal preference, and what your insurance will cover, what test is right for you. Now, the colonoscopy is still the preferred method of screening. Uh, that's the test where you are sedated, it's an outpatient procedure, and the doctor uses a scope to look for colon cancer or polyps or masses in your colon or your rectum. Um, it's, uh, the, the prep is involved and it's not as bad as what people might think, but um, if it's negative, then you only have to repeat it every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a couple of newer tests that are stool-based that uh, people are finding easier to do mm -hmm. uh, and they're more likely to do them because they can do them at home, mm -hmm. but they have to be performed more often. Uh, one uh, example is the FIT test, and this is a fecal immunochemical test, much like the one performed in the doctor's office, but it's mailed to you and you take a stool sample and you send it back. There's no prep required. You don't have any dietary or d drug restrictions. But if it comes back positive, you may need a colonoscopy to further evaluate. Uh, but if it's negative, then you just repeat it every year. Now, the other test that's rapidly gaining in popularity is the stool DNA test. Uh, Cologuard is the only one currently available, and it tests for both blood and DNA in your stool. Um, and I'm convincing more and more patients to do this test because, again, it's done at home, um, and it's it, very accurate. I had one patient who absolutely refused to get her colonoscopy for years. Finally, we were able to get her to do this test. It did come back positive. We sent her for a colonoscopy. It showed polyps uh, and they were removed, but now she's on a more frequent screening track. Uh, so if your test comes back positive, like my patient, you may need a colonoscopy. But if it's negative, then you only need to repeat it every three years. And with all of these new options, it sounds like there's a big push to just get screened. And I shared with you earlier, my grandfather actually died from colon cancer. So, you know, people, a lot of people probably just need to know what test is right for them. Absolutely. The biggest thing is to get screened. Go to your doctor, let them look at your risk factors, determine what test is right for you. I stress to my patients that colon cancer mm -hmm. is one of the most easily treatable and preventable cancers, but you gotta look to find it. And if you wait, sometimes it's too late. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Haley. And again, you should talk to your doctor and get screened. For more information, just visit hcamidwest.com backside. You can also take a free online colon cancer risk assessment.